evening, everyone, and welcome to the special board meeting of the Halton District School Board for April the 13th. I hope you are all well. Uh, tonight, we'll be using a combo of Google Forms and the hands up function in Google Meets. The links are available in the HDSB Remote Meetings links page that was sent to you earlier today. With the hands up function, you should be able to see the speakers list in the side of your screen, but both Vice Chair L. Harrison and I will try to give an account of the order so that if it's building up, you'll have an idea as to when your question will be answered. We've also adjusted some of our voting procedures, but I don't know if that's important tonight to use unanimous consent. As always, particularly this evening, as we head back into our meeting, let's try to remember the meeting rules of the road we agreed to back at the beginning of our term, which will help us to guide us through the meeting in a respectful, organized and timely manner, ensuring we address the business of the board with kindness and respect. So I'd now like to take trustee roll call. And again today, I'll do it in traditional alphabetical order. Trustee Amos. Good evening or good afternoon, everyone. I know it's kind of that funny time. Is it the evening or the afternoon? It's kind of light outside. Thanks. Uh, Trustee Bell. Hi, everyone. Wonderful. Thank you. Trustee Collard. I'm here. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Trustee Daniele. Thank you, I am here. Uh, Vice Chair Al Harrison. Hello, I'm here. Great, Trustee Garrett. Hi everyone. Uh, Trustee Gray. Good evening, folks. Trustee Gobetz. Hi everybody. Trustee Oliver. Good evening, everyone. Trustee Reynolds. Present. Trustee Rosha. Present. And Trustee Vidilankara. Hi everyone. Wonderful. Director Ennis, could you please let us know of the staff that are in attendance this evening? Good evening, Chair Shuttleworth, the rest of the trustees, and to the public at large. Uh, just happy to be here for this meeting. We have with us uh, Associate Director Bog, we have Superintendent Taha of Human Resources, and we also have Superintendent Terry Blackwell, who has a health portfolio. So we're happy to be here this evening. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, so today, Vice Chair Al Harrison will be honoring the land. Thank you. Halton as we know it today is rich in history and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis. From the Anishinaabe to the Attawandaran, the Haudenosaunee and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, we have the responsibility to honour and respect the four directions, land, waters, plants, animals, ancestors that walk before us, and all the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We would like to thank and acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for sharing their traditional territory with us. Wonderful, thank you so much. Are there any declarations of possible conflict of interest? Seeing none, as this is a special board meeting, there are no opportunities to adjust the agenda and really there's only one item for discussion this afternoon, which is item 2.1 which is the COVID-19 update, focusing on masking protocols and further direction, if there is any, from public health. So before we begin the meeting, I thought it might be a nice opportunity for me to recap the information that I received at my weekly chair conference with the Minister of Education. Um, I was lucky enough to be one of the first question askers on the list. And what I'm going to do for you now is I'm going to read my question that I asked him and then give you what the minister's direct answer was to me. Uh, so my question was this, with all the announcements from the varying public health authorities regarding the evolving situation schools find themselves in, we as a board find ourselves trying to find the right fit for messaging sent out, sent out to our communities. Here in Halton, our public health has recommended that Halton residents continue to wear high quality masks in indoor settings where physical distancing may be a challenge. Dr. Moore's press release yesterday also used similar language in encouraging masking. My question is this, is the ministry asking the school boards to use similar language in encouraging or strongly encouraging masking where physical distancing may be difficult? And as a follow-up, can you confirm the individual authority that each board has in relation to the ministry's direction in terms of masking? 
So now to his answers, and I'm going to start with the second one first. As I've asked this question on numerous occasions prior to spring break and following spring break, and every time the answer is the same. It is no full stop provincial direction overrides board decision. So with the first part of the question, what the minister did state is that again, his messaging has not changed since March break. Parents will make the choice based on their own risk tolerance. Local medical officers of health will understand the context and the risk, and we encourage, encourage boards to consult with them. We should respect the choices of parents and school boards, if they so choose, can echo the publicly stated opinion of public health. So that's just a sort of a recap of what the answers were I got yesterday. And with that, I'm going to pass the mic over to Director Ennis for staff to guide us through their information. Director Ennis. Uh, thank you so much, Chair Shuttleworth, and good evening once again, everyone. The last three school years uh, have tested all of us. We have worked through COVID and the pandemic in a way that none of us could have anticipated. It has changed how we have interacted with each other. And we've learned to follow directives and mandates and recommendations throughout this pandemic. This is the third school year that has been impacted by this pandemic. And I can tell you that staff and students and everyone are simply exhausted. I want to acknowledge the great work that everyone has done to keep our schools and our students together and to keep them learning. And I just want to thank the leaders in our schools and all of our board facilities for the great job that they have done throughout. Recently, the government lifted mass mandates, and that has prompted a variety of questions, uh, responses, and requests. And so we find ourselves in a position having to respond to a variety of different voices. At this time, we have always maintained as a board that we follow the direction of the uh, government and our local public health and whatever recommendations they give us and it's been a confusing time for many because throughout the pandemic, there are often two set of rules and sometimes it's not very clear to everyone that sometimes not everything that applies to the community applies to schools and vice versa. And so here we find ourselves in a, in a predicament. And so I'm going to turn it over to Superintendent Blackwell, who has been our voice at the table with public health uh, throughout for this last year. And uh, she will update us on whatever information she has. She's done that time and again, and uh, will continue to do so. So we want to say thank you to Superintendent Blackwell for always keeping us apprised of the latest happenings with uh, our responses to COVID. Superintendent Blackwell. Uh, thank you, Director Ennis. And uh, through the chair to the Board of Trustees, uh, the question around uh, the mask mandates, the question that you asked, uh, uh, Chair Shuttleworth, is, is something that we also asked public health. And I know that there's uh, lots of different uh, understanding of directives uh, and uh, messaging from not only uh, Halton Region Public Health, but uh, Ontario Public Health as well. Uh, families and uh, may have seen some of the recommendations to encourage continued mask wearing, especially indoors, um, to continue to also, it's, it's not just about mask wearing, right? This is about vaccines, uh, people accessing vaccines, uh, that they also look to um, uh, the mandates, when we talk about mandates being lifted, and, and I want to put it in the same conversation, we've lifted mask mandates, but we've also lifted vaccine mandates. And so I'd, I'd like to talk about both of them uh, in terms of that encouragement, uh, because I think they are, they've always partnered. It's always been something uh, that we've, we've considered. Um, you know, our chief medical officer of health in Halton um, has shared Multiple times, uh, we met. We met last Wednesday, I believe, and had a conversation uh, about our meeting that day. Uh, I've communicated with Halton Region Public Health since then a couple of times, uh, given the, the current conversation and uh, the decision to reinstate uh, not only population, because this is not always just school, right? It's community and uh, it's also uh, school-based. Uh, to reinstate any masking mandates in Ontario would be a provincial one. Uh, 
and uh, the epidemiology in which those decisions are being made at the provincial level uh, is no different right now in Halton. And at this time, uh, it's not something that uh, Halton Region Public Health uh, is, is suggesting in terms of taking a, a, an action that's different than the provincial one. Uh, I, I know that as well, we have questions around, well, what is the impact since kids have been, uh, since our staff and our students have not been wearing masks uh, or have been wearing masks in schools and also in the community. And uh, so we, th this data is public. We report daily uh, in terms of uh, how many absences we have in our schools, not only in terms of staff, but in students and then a, a combined rate. Um, the comparators, we're not comparing apples to apples. Uh, we do have differing conditions. So for example, after March break, uh, our staff, all of them are over 18, uh, are required to have a booster uh, as a household close contact uh, if someone in their home is ill with COVID-like symptoms or presumed COVID. Uh, prior to March break, uh, staff could return um, with uh, having fully vaccinated two doses. So that landscape has changed a little bit. So the numbers, that may be a reason why some of our staff uh, the absence rates have increased uh, with staff. So when I look at uh, January to March, so just before March break, the average staff absences per day uh, as a system are eight and a half percent. And uh, since uh, March break, uh, we have, since we've come back, they're about 11.2%. Uh, with students, we're looking at a 9.6% 9 9 prior to March break. 12.6 uh, following March break, 9.5% uh, overall with all of our students and our staff and our board. And we're talking about 70,000 people, which is a, a lot of people. 9.5% uh, of uh, all of Halton staff and students prior to March break, and then about 12.5%. So we're looking at about a 3% increase uh, since those mandates have been lifted. And again, the comparators, uh, there are different changes to isolation requirements. What we do know is that people are still following the tool and when they're symptomatic, they are staying home. Uh, and they are extending, they are using the testing strategy to return uh, to ensure that uh, they have rapid antigen tests available to them every day in our schools. A reminder to our families, they are there. The rapid tests are available for our students. They're also available for our staff. And, uh, and that ability to test to return is there. Um, the other thing is around close contacts in the community. Prior to March break, there were requirements around um, notifying close, close contacts and isolation. Uh, now, again, that has changed in terms of uh, our ability to return to work from the, the close contact pieces. So it's 18 plus for our, the adults that, that work within our system. So there is a little bit of a tighter uh, lens on that in terms of isolation requirements. And uh, I guess for our trustees and, and for the public, and this data is public, um, we're looking at about a 3% increase uh, in, in absenteeism. Um, so I think uh, at this time with our, our direction from public health, you know, we, are, we continue to not just look at masking, uh, we continue to, to support and promote vaccines. Uh, we, we promote that through any communication we get from public health and we send that to our families. And I think it's sometimes hard when um, we've got community messaging sometimes that is very contrary or different than the messaging that comes to our schools. Uh, we have always had this. It just seems like we've always had school messaging at the same time that kind of parallels. So we've been able to, to report that to families or to, or to provide that information. We've had no change in direction uh, from the Ministry of Education since the return from uh, March break. Uh, around this and uh, and continue to have the conversations. You know, if 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 public health and uh, as a province deems something uh, to change, as we've done many times, then we we follow and support and and work with those mandates. 
Um, and I guess at that time, I'd like to turn it over unless uh, Director Ennis has something else to add, maybe some questions. No, thank you very much for that, uh, Superintendent Blackwell. Uh, we we can open it up to questions. Uh, or back to you, Chair Shuttleworth. All right, uh, thank you both Director Ennis and Superintendent Blackwell for all that information that you've given us. Um, so I will now open the floor um, to trustees for questions they may have. Trustee Gravens. Uh, yes, thank you through the chair. Um, <clears throat> uh, I wanna thank you for this information. Um, and uh, especially Chair Shuttleworth for her questions directly to the minister. Uh, it, um, I listened to the press conference on Monday of Dr. Kiriam Murr, and uh, I find it frustrating uh, that the, this, um, this province uh, is basing their implementation of protections on the health of the healthcare system, on the uh, admissions of hospitalizations and ICU, uh, when the education system has a potentially very different breaking point. Uh, we are very concerned about continuity of learning and uh, it doesn't take a, a hospital admission or an ICU admission uh, for uh, people to be out of our classrooms. Uh, mild symptoms, a simple infection uh, can uh, affect students and staff. And I, I really would like to see uh, Dr. Kirian Moore uh, have a, a, a concrete conversation with operational staff uh, of in the school system, perhaps with the with directors of education to understand the stress that is on the system right now uh, because we do not have um, the ability to mitigate uh, through a universal masking mandate. Uh, Dr. Tam Federally, uh, many groups, uh, Public Health Ontario, um, the uh, Children's Health Coalition, they've all been calling for uh, a return to universal masking and Universal masking allows as well people who are vulnerable, either themselves, which could be staff or students, um, allows them to have uh, more control over their exposure to COVID. Without a mandate, they, they don't have that control. It's affecting uh, people with students and staff being off work, especially from students who may have family members who cannot work if they're caring for themselves or their children, it's affecting income, it's affecting all sorts of things. And I, I think that that um, Dr. Moore and the minister, frankly, is blind to that uh, effect on the system by not having protections in place. So um, <clears throat> I know that I put a statement out on Twitter uh, saying that I was gonna bring a mask mandate, but uh, a motion, but, I will not be doing that because I know that it's it's futile. We would have parents uh, wanting principals to, uh, well, principals being asked to exclude students that don't have masks and they have, students have the right to be in a classroom and their parents will be very forthright about that. And so that is a futile and time-wasting conversation. And what also will happen will is parents will be expecting that their children will be in classrooms full of masks. And when they find out that that's not happening, the other side is gonna be upset as well. And let's multiply that by you know, 50, 100 students in a school or maybe even more. So um, our staff has been incredible during this whole pandemic. And to put that extra stress and burden on them at this time uh, for, to have a mandate in place that cannot be enforced um, is just, it's cruel. Yeah. So I'm, I, I, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Uh, thank you.
Uh, Trustee Oliver. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair, to the Director. I'm wondering if you can reflect um, for us on what absenteeism looks like in schools in terms of student absenteeism related specifically to reasons stated as being um, illness or influenza-like illness. And, um, you know, do we have uh, information that's specific to each of the municipalities? Um, are we seeing kind of hot spots anywhere? And also, what is the absenteeism like for staff? Um, and then I'll have a second part to follow that. Thank you. Thank you for the question, uh, Trustee Oliver. I'm going to ask uh, Superintendent Blackwell to start and Superintendent Taha as well can join. Go ahead, Superintendent Blackwell. Thank you, Director Ennis, through the chair to uh, Trustee Oliver. Uh, we do not uh, delineate by absence code. Um, we are reporting our absences as per a student, not an in-person learning. Uh, that is the requirement to report at the ministry level at this point. Um, we have uh, reported our, uh, the initial direction from the ministry was to report uh, 30, per, went, sorry, to acknowledge uh, or look at concerns where it's 30% above baseline. Uh, we have not done the baseline calculation. We've said baseline is zero. If we have 30% of our kids out for any reason, we need to have a conversation. We've taken that very seriously. Uh, we have had, I believe, one occurrence of a school uh, with over 30% absence where a, a letter from public health, uh, obviously a conversation with public health. Uh, as trustees will know, there's lots of stuff going on in the community as well right now. So where a school might have a large number of kids out on a Friday, we might find out that in Georgetown, for example, I believe there was a hockey tournament. Um, and so we look at the absences at a school level when that number reaches a percentage that's fairly significant, which is the 30% mark, and then have the conversations. Let's, let's look at the data uh, at the school level to see what the, the real da data is. So while we're not reporting publicly on absences related to symptoms or isolation, don't forget many of our kids may be home from isolation requirements and following those guidelines, but not be symptomatic themselves. Uh, then the conversation is had at the school level with the principal who has access to that information and, uh, and, and would be able to work with public health where uh, if it were a significant number uh, that were related to COVID, then, we've, then they would take uh, action or communicate accordingly. Uh, but the, the one, case that we have had, I believe there was a, a, a valid reason for that. Uh, we also know that there are upcoming holidays uh, that are coming where we'll look at uh, significant days of, sorry, days of significance where that will have an impact. So those conversations are had at the school level. Um, I believe part of your question as well was around uh, the staff increases in absences. And so again, we're about uh, a 3% increase since the mask mandate was lifted. Uh, many of our absences are, are related to, uh, to isolation requirements as a household member uh, where they were not having to isolate prior to March break without uh, a booster. Now they are. So I see Superintendent Taha. I'm talking staff. I'm taking over his space. So I will I'll pass it over to him. Thank you, uh, Superintendent Blackwell. Uh, through you, uh, Chair Shuttleworth, to uh, Trustee Oliver. Uh, just building on the commentary that uh, Superintendent Blackwell had uh, had shared, I would caution uh, 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 that we draw you know concrete inferences from from the spike in absenteeism and attribute that to the lifting of any of uh, of any of the restrictions, be it uh, uh, you know uh, masking or or uh, vaccination uh, requirements. Uh, there is a spike in absenteeism, as uh, Superintendent Blackwell shared with you, from uh, you know uh, pre-March, pre-March, uh, so January, and February, uh, relative to March and April. Uh, but the data tells us that the isolation reason, so absences uh, related to isolation requirements, have not really spiked. Uh, they're no different than during the Omicron wave back in in uh, in November, December. Uh, so the isolation numbers uh, are relatively steady. 
the absenteeism has increased, but to uh, Superintendent uh, Blackwell's uh, point and Director Ennis and, and uh, Trustee uh, Grabenz, uh, we could we could say that this is a reflection of a of a tired workforce, uh, a workforce that's exhausted. Uh, in fact, our illness uh, absenteeism has increased. So this is uh, illness not necessarily related to COVID. Uh, in other words, you're not on a quarantine leave or absenteeism, but you are ill. It could be uh, mental health and well-being, could be physical, could be a host of reasons. So absenteeism is increasing. Uh, can we say there's a you know one-to-one -one relationship uh, due to masking? Uh, for sure, there, there's probably a, a correlation there, but I wouldn't say it's it's you know it's a linear one. Uh, the isolation, uh, as I said, one thing of you know was surprising as we dig into the data, the isolation usage, utilization, uh, quarantine language uh, has been steady. It's still high, and we're as you know we're we're uh, doing everything we can to ensure that continuity of learning uh, is where it needs to be or as best as we could make it be. Uh, but again, it's difficult to say that this is related to masking and that the, you know, the, you know, uh, someone contracted uh, COVID at, you know, from a transmissibility point of view uh, in the workforce. So it's, it's tricky. It's messy. Uh, it, it tells different stories depending on what you're looking at, but that's what I can build on uh, Superintendent Blackwell's uh, data uh, question with staff for staff. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Oliver, you said you had a follow-up. Is it different because Trustee Gray is also on the speaker list? So do I want me to come back to you? Yeah, okay, Trustee Gray. Um, thank you very much through the chair to Director Ennis. Um, I wonder if you could uh, relay to us what it looks like in a school um, right now in terms of the messaging that we have around um, highly supporting the use of masks in schools. I know last week at the board meeting, when we had a discussion about this, you shared with us that PPE is widely uh, distributed and available to staff and students uh, as one means of our school board uh, strongly supporting the use of masking. But I'm wondering, can you describe for us other ways in which our board is sharing that message with our students at this time? and staff members at this time. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee Gray. I'm gonna start and then I'm gonna ask Superintendent Blackwell to um, build on my comments. As you know, we were quite clear uh, once the mandates were lifted that we wanted to create a school um, environment and community that was harmonious and that was uh, peaceful, that those who chose to wear masks were supported and those who chose not to wear masks were also supported. That is the right that each and every student and staff in, in, in the community has. And so we, we wanted to make sure that we're building a cohesive community. That was really our focus. And I know that there are many things that we are doing uh, to continue to encourage, um, you know, that families and students, you know, should stay as safe as possible. But in many cases, uh, Trustee Gray, they have, um, I found that families have made their choice and uh, you know they are they have decided to wear masks or not to wear masks, and uh, but we we continue to hold uh, to supporting and encouraging um, with the understanding that it is for everyone, though both those who choose to wear masks and those who choose not to wear masks, because that that's the medium, the happy medium that I think we need to find, and that's what we we've we've had no choice but to get to that point, and so. Uh, I'm asked uh, Superintendent Blackwell to speak to some of the other measures um, that we have used to encourage uh, families and students. See, sorry, uh, through the chair to uh, Trustee Gray. Um, so our messaging uh, around masking and all of the the measures and reminders around vaccination they come in, in multiple layers, pardon the pun. Um, they, uh, we share any information that's given to us from Halton Region Public Health uh, through system messaging. We also shared the messaging around uh, re the return from March break. Um, we have not as a system shared uh, messaging uh, around uh, 
uh, you know, recently around masking as a, as a one-off example. Um, we will, uh, I think I shared at the last board meeting that there are lots of ways that schools promote uh, or encourage the use of masking with having the availability. So if somebody walks into a school, there may be masks available on a table at the front door. Um, there will be opportunities where uh, if school events are being run, I believe there was uh, there's an event happening, for example, at uh, Burlington Central. It's one of their drama shows and messaging in, in the invitation to families, which we know that there are opportunities now to bring our families back into buildings, um, that it is a mask friendly environment and, and they would have you know, masks outside the door for those that want to wear them, right? Uh, or that have may have forgotten them. Uh, so in, in terms of how it's messaged weekly, um, it that would be up to the school level to do that. Uh, and as Director Ennis has said, uh, you know, our families and our schools are, have made, they have been living this for two and a half years and, and they have made the decisions uh, around masking and sometimes around vaccination. Uh, we are providing information. Uh, we're not the only people that provide the information. And I think that, that that's important for us to always recognize that it's not just the school responsibility and the, our school responsibility uh, to be the sole provider of recommendations or suggestions uh, that we partner with uh, community, uh, the community in terms of that messaging. Um, so long story short, uh, you know, to, to be able to speak to what each school is doing, it's not something that I would be able to do, but we continue to, and I see um, uh, Manager Denton is, is also online, we continue to, to message uh, where message is provided to us that we would be able to share with our families uh, that may be different uh, than what's there. Thank you very much. Uh, Trustee Collard. Oh, thank you. Yes, I've been hearing from um, parents who have students in the system who have special needs, um, some fragile health, and their concern is that without a mask mandate in place provincially or mandated by public health, that they're afraid to send their children to school. And um, they, and yet they know that the best environment for their children is in the classroom. And the one mother that I spoke to, the very next day, her, her daughter tested positive for COVID and she was beside herself. And I'm, I'm just wondering what we can do to encourage beyond uh, leaving it up to individual school, but systemically to encourage masking, not just having that level playing field where we say, you can be with a mask, you can be without a mask. Um, I, I do believe it's incumbent upon us to encourage masking because we do know that it helps stop the spread of COVID. We don't wanna leave anyone feeling like they have to, but I do think we have a responsibility to encourage. Director Ennis. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Trustee Collard. You know, certainly as uh, Superintendent Blackwell has said, you know, schools on an individual basis, um, you know, continue to encourage uh, mask wearing, but we do understand it. it is within the context that we do not have mask mandates anymore and that families and students have choice. And so, you know, we operate within that parameter uh, I hear you, and uh, you know it is something that we will will definitely reflect on in terms of our, our system message. Um, but we we do we do believe that uh, families and students have made their choice, as, as Superintendent Blackwell said. This is the third year that we're dealing with this, and um, I, I, you know, I will continue to encourage folks to wear masks. Those who who can, and uh, but not. They, they, have an op they have an option, they have an out, and we have no way of enforcing it. And so that's the difficult place in which we find ourselves. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Oh, Vice Chair O'Hara. 
Thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. You were quite quiet there. I'm not sure. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Just making sure it's not on my end. So since Dr. Moore's uh, press conference, recently, there's been a flurry of activities and questions and unrest uh, in at the community level as well as uh, within school systems, which it was pointed out that school systems have had a parallel yet sometimes different set of rules. And it's quite clear from the minister's perspective uh, that um, there are, there are to be no mask mandates put in place by individual boards. They, they're not enforceable. Uh, and therefore, I would, it would be really uh, difficult to achieve what Director Ennis is talking about, that, that strong, cohesive community at schools if there was that um, burden on administrators to enforce something that's not enforceable. Um, but to, to Trustee Collard's point about what we can do as a system, certainly uh, Dr. Tam, Dr. Moore, Dr. Magani, Public Health Ontario, um, the Children's Coalition have all in the short time frame after March break indicated that the cases are on the rise and have all used the words encourage <laughs> or some hybrid of that strongly encourage whatever that people wear masks. TDSB, other boards in the last two days have wrestled, wrestled with this. Uh, and, um, you know, one is writing a letter to the minister. One decided to take no action because they're mask mandate was not going to be enforceable. One put in place a mask mandate and we're called on to be leaders. Uh, and I, I want to, to be that in the face of community division and sometimes opposing information from experts. So therefore I, it's not, it's not a motion, but it is just to come to this, when we wrap up this meeting, to have a clear perspective that we as a board systemically are saying a single message, which is, please, you're encouraged to wear masks get vaccinated. We as a board, we're continuing on the ventilation pathway, hand washing, etc. It's a package of things. You are encouraged to do that. Yes, you have a choice, but, but please, <laughs> the cases are on the rise. Take the actions that need to be taken here. So uh, that's, that's my perspective. It's, it's not a motion. It is, I think it's a request. Um, and the other piece is that we are spending countless hours of senior staff, staff in schools, worrying about spinning off in different directions. And we need to focus on health, well-being, and, and delivering education. Thank you. Thank, thank you for that, uh, Vice Chair L. Harrison. Um, we, we are certainly going to reflect on uh, the words that we've heard from you and from all the trustees here this evening and uh, working in uh, conjunction and collaboration with our communications team. Think about what message we can offer to our school communities to, con to encourage them, um, given the parameters that we are working within. I think that's uh, always important to to keep in in focus. Thank you so much, Trustee Gray. Uh, thank you very much to the chair. I just wonder, uh, and then to the director Ennis, I wonder if you could uh, share with us any of the conversations or directions that have taken place. Um, 
with regards uh, to uh, code, the Council of Directors of Education at the provincial level. Um, I wonder if there's anything to share in terms of what other directors are, are uh, discussing at this time in their boards in relation to masking. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Trustee Gray. At the, at co the code level, um, Council of Directors of Education, the conversation really was about mass mandates. And uh, that's where the conversation uh, was being uh, was being held. So uh, certainly the uh, legal opinion that code received was similar to what we've all heard this evening is that school boards have no authority to impose mandates and to move beyond the, what the, pro the province has uh, directed us to do. And so uh, it did not um, we did not have a conversation about, you know, recommendation or encouraging mass mandates. It was about whether or not boards could go on their own and institute mass mandates contrary to what the province has put forward. And it was clearly, we were clearly told that is not something we want to enter into, nor did it, is it advisable, and we have no authority to do so. Thank you. Trustee Oliver. Uh, thanks through you, Chair, to the Director. I, I did want to build on the um, on the points raised by uh, Vice Chair L. Harrison. Um, so we we HCSB has always followed um, public health guidance and advice, and um, as was already mentioned, three leading uh, public health experts. Our um, uh, national chief medical officer of health, Dr. Tam, Ontario's public health, and Halton's uh, Dr. McGanny, medical officer of health, are all encouraging masking, masking in public places. Dr. Moore also um, advocates and encourages for wearing masks in public places. He then goes on to say that everybody needs to assess their own risk. Well, to assess one's risk, one needs full information. And nobody has that, right, beyond what you know about yourself and your own household. And who cannot assess their, their personal risk are the students, our young, young kids in school who do not have the skill set uh, or the competence to do that. So I think it goes a long way for us to, um, to continue being aligned with the messaging from public health, which is to encourage wearing masks and to share that communication with our um, parents, students, and staff. Um, as as uh, Superintendent Blackwell said, uh, there are numbers of um, sources of information and messaging but I think for Halton District School Board, we are the key source. And I think it would go a long way to say that we are supporting and we are hearing what Public Health Ontario is saying. And we are supporting that messaging and we are encouraging masking. So I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Oliver, and I think I'm going to echo all of the trustees in that just just a little word. Um, and I know we've had discussions about this before, but can we truly consider as a board looking at encouraging mask wearing? Director Ennis. Sorry, Chair Shuttleworth, could you repeat that for me, please? So as a board, could we consider encouraging in our statement mask wearing uh, thank you for that question uh, chair shuttleworth i'm certainly going to be working with staff and our communication team to see what uh, how we can craft a letter that will uh, encourage not just masks as superintendent blackwell says but vaccination and other the suite the whole suite of options that are available uh, to students and families and staff and so uh, within the parameters of the, the no mask mandate that we have. So it's not just about masking, it's about the entire suite of options that are available to um, 
to students and families. So I am certainly going to be uh, working with staff on, uh, on crafting something. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions? Vice Chair Alhara. Thank you. Um, when I thought about, through you, Madam Chair, when I was thinking about uh, possible motions for this meeting, the one that popped into my mind was to request that the minister clearly lay out whose jurisdiction is what with respect to these matters. But upon reflection, I recognize that in a number of press conferences, the Premier, the Minister, have both um, made their perspectives clear on whose jurisdiction is whose. Um, as well, the Minister wrote a letter, I believe, to Hamilton Wentworth District School Board uh, with respect to their motion on continuing mask ma mandates in particular. So I, in my mind, I think feel that piece is uh, is very is clear out there with respect to the provincial uh, perspective uh, and kind of the the box that we or the guidelines or parameters within which we are are trying to operate so so again uh, no motion there and you are now you have you're on this record at this meeting of also conveying what the minister has said directly yesterday. So um, hopefully that piece um, can, can be out there in the community. You know, I think that would be, be helpful because for me, I am, I am trying to lead within, but no matter what walk of life we're in, there are, rules that are imposed and I don't always like them, but <laughs> that's, that's how it is in this case. So I'm glad we illuminated that during this discussion. Uh, be great. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, one of the things that I thought about in preparation for this meeting tonight was what's the end game? What do we want at the end of all of this? And I'm so pleased to hear from Director Ennis that instead of uh, a, a, maybe a passive approach to this and the encouragement of masks, we may be upon reflection and upon his discussion with other senior members of staff, we may be taking a more active approach in the um, um, the suggestion and encouragement of the use of masks. And, I, and I'm very thankful for that, Director Ennis. I think it's the right way to go. I, 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 it, for me, it was the end game out of this conversation was a more active approach. So thank you very much. Thank you, Trustee Gray. Trustee Oliver, I didn't know if your hand was up or not because it went away. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, thank you, through your chair to the director. And I think, you know, with, with any kind of messaging that's meant to um, um, reinforce uh, or support behavioral changes or continuing adherence, um, people have to understand the big picture. What is the end goal? And, you know, obviously it's to keep everybody healthy and prevent them from getting sick. But the, the goal here too is, you know, we are in the business of education we want to keep our schools open. We want to make sure that classes are filled with healthy students and that teachers are coming, you know, to work and teaching with high um, teacher absenteeism rates. You know, you end up getting supply teachers and those teachers do not know their students as well. So if there are, you know, any, um, kind of special circumstances or whatever, that, that teacher will not be able to um, fully understand the student's needs. So the students are deprived. When a classroom is half empty, the teacher is not going to uh, you know, take on new uh, content from the curriculum because they, they can't start teaching something new to a half empty classroom. 
And so that continuity of learning uh, now becomes a gap. And we already know in the last two years, our students have lost out on uh, and have gaps um, and deficits in their learning, um, gaps in terms of their opportunities for sports clubs, extracurricular activities. And we do want our students to go uh, and uh, you know enjoy all the milestones that come through with their academic year. And that includes uh, you know special events, and especially graduations for the grade eights and the grade 12s. So that's the end goal, right? We want to keep people healthy so all of that can happen. So, you know, classes um, stay open, students are learning, they're learning new content, they're progressing, and they're making up for, you know, the lost time. And uh, all the things that students look forward to can happen. And, and that takes one um, you know, fairly simple measure, and that's wearing a mask. And that will protect all the students who cannot um, uh, get their vaccine uh, for whatever reason, who are not ready. So that protects the younger students. So anyway, I just, you know, I think it's important to, to have that big picture in mind when we talk about our communications and what is the reason for our strong encouragement of mask wearing um, in schools. Thank you. Thank you. Um, seeing no further hands up and being conscious of time, I actually did my research before I came to this meeting well uh, before. And so again, I'm just going to summarize that suite of support that Director Ennis spoke of in looking at how we're moving forward. So I wanna take this time to remind everyone again, most importantly and above all, to be kind to everyone. Take care of yourselves and take care of one another. In line with many other school boards across Ontario, we encourage you to use all the tools that you have been provided with. Complete your daily screening before your children go to school. Stay home if you're not feeling well and access those rapid antigen tests that are available for you. I also want to remind you of all the measures that are in place within our schools right now. Masks are provided to staff and students upon request. We have enhanced our air quality and ventilation systems with additional HEPA filters and upgraded HVAC systems. We distribute, we distribute rapid antigen tests to support symptomatic testing of both staff and student. We continue to use enhanced cleaning protocols and we continue to encourage hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette. And finally, as a board, we encourage you to get vaccinated. Walk-in clinics are available for all doses of the vaccine for all of the ages. And we also encourage you to wear a mask when you're indoor spaces. We know that we all make our own decisions. And we ask that we also respect everyone's decision, regardless of the choice they have made. Thank you so much to all of our staff and our students for everything that you have done in moving forward to today. And with that, I declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you so much.